Hello everyone, welcome back to another week of talking about my new favorite obsession and or fascination and obsession, yeah, obsession, obsession, it'd be an obsession, of New World. <clears throat> so this week we're going to talk about the PvE aspect. You can't not believe how many times I've messed up saying PvP instead. But if you're like me and like to fight against the actual game a lot of times, this game has quite a few options now. It actually started didn't start out that way. New World started out as a PvP mostly game, open world PvP. It was kind of like Ark, I guess, if you want to if you want to go back in history. I'm not going to get into that today. But today we're going to talk about three different PvE aspects, arenas, breaches, and invasions. First up, we're going to talk about arenas. So what are arenas? Arenas are instance-based PvE encounters in New World. First of all, you will need a special item that will give, grant you access to these instances. Um, and it is actually an instance that is a separate thing than the general map, so let's keep that in mind. Uh, this is called an instance key, is what you're going to need. It is an item. It's uh, relatively easy to find. You, will, It will be looted from certain monsters in New World. In the open world, not the instance world, the open world. But yes, a key can be used only once, unfortunately. You will lose it after you use it to teleport, but you have, you can have as many keys as you can find. So keep searching, keep loot stacking them up because you're probably gonna need more than once it sounds like these are some really tough things um there are no restrictions you can pass the instance again and again so yeah as many times as you want you can get your group go back and keep trying again after you find the necessary item aka the keys also you receive the coordinates for a location where you can use this key i believe um looking through the interwebs my fun interwebs they said it will be like a uh, tower or a spire or a obelisk, some kind of ancient statue of some sort, I'm sure. But after you find the item, you will receive the coordinates and you will go to that location. Will you, either alone, not it's not advised to do it alone, or a group of adventurers like yourself. You can enter it alone or with groups of teammates. Not recommended to go alone. I've said this before. Get a group. Get a buddy. Get a pal. Come join me over on my stream, Twitch, Box and Doxin, the Box and Doxin. Link down below. <clears throat> self, shameless, shameless self promotion, everybody. Gotta love it. The one area we do know about currently is called the Spriggan area. Now you might ask, what the hell is a Spriggan? And I had looked this up myself. So thanks to a good old friend, old friend Google. A Spriggan is a legendary creature from Cornish fairy lore, and that's about what I know about it. It looks like this. I'm going to have pictures up, so you'll see it. You'll see it somewhere down here, over there, up there, up there, left, right, down, left, right. I don't know. Wherever this video is and how I edit this whole fun scene. But, <clears throat> Spriggan is, uh, uh, yeah, is a legendary creature from Cornish lore. Cornish, that's a C, not a K. Arenas are separated, uh, arenas are separated from the general map. You After you enter, you cannot leave. You will have... To either win or lose that is why you must get prepared first to make sure you and your allies have enough potions food and keep your gear tip top shape now looking at the gameplay of this uh the arena the spriggan arena it looks awesome this looks like an awesome single boss fight it's not like a dungeon it's just i believe it's a single boss the way they showed it off so you you enter the arena and it'll be you your teammates and this Forest Vine creature, which has some really cool abilities. It looks like it, looks like it has like vine whip and it can go underground and pop up anywhere so your healers aren't even safe. Looks really cool. Um, it also has a cool mode where it'll cocoon itself, crystal crystallize itself when it's a little vine, a vine ball, a, viney, a veiny ball, a viney ball. Everybody, yes, I said that right. Viney, veiny ball. Where it will heal itself and that'll be a good opportunity to get some damage on it. Um, I might go into a deeper dive later if you guys would like to see a deeper dive on the Spriggan itself, the battle, when it comes out. Comment down below, let me know, like this video and subscribe, and I'll, uh, that's, that's, that's content I kind of want to do in the future. So we'll get into that later. But yeah, this looks like a really cool fight. What do you guys think about this fight? Um, let me know, comment down below what you think about it. If you think it's going to be a really cool idea, if you like the PvE, if you're not interested in PvE, you want to go to PvP, we'll be talking about that probably next. 
But no, this video is not all about arenas. It's also about breaches. So bre what are breaches? Breaches or corrupted breaches are the world coming to fight us back. To stop us. To stop us from growing. Stop us from progressing. Stop building our forts and our settlements. So the corrupted seek to stain and dominate, dominate with their vile presence across the land. Taking what was once serene and peaceful and twisting it with their will. And they do this by reopening the ground and flooding the area with corrupted creatures and structures. <laughs> the very area turns to a black, thick smoke and all is illuminated in an evil red glow, pulsating with underlying light. Unearth unearthly <laughs> light, sorry. These are known as corrupted breaches. As you establish yourself in a safe haven, in a settlement or a fort, the corrupt take note. Corrupted breaches will begin to emerge in your territory and make travel and resource gathering more difficult. Yes, more difficult as will be. Dread portals and monoliths form the heart of these corrupted breaches. You must band together and clear out the enemies protecting the heart of these breaches. Once the corrupted creatures have been destroyed, an Azoth-infused staff is required to seal these breaches. I'm not sure where we'll get these staffs right now, but we'll, we'll figure that out later on. Opening your map will allow you to see these territories affected by the corrupted zoning. You will be able to clearly see indicators showcasing the different corrupted breaches. Some corrupted breaches can be managed by single player, while others will require groups of skilled combatants to complete. So again, you can do some of these by yourself, but most of you probably have to have a good party and yeah, come on, join me on Twitch. We'll start clearing the land of this heresy. So there's going to be a couple different forms of these breaches. Uh, the first one being a corrupted monolith, a group of corrupted... Zealots have unearthed a towering ancient monolith, empowering it to spread corruption throughout the land. So that's one form of them. Another one is called a corrupted portal. Corrupted acolytes are opening a portal to bring forces of their army into the territory. So again, corrupted portal. More creatures come through the portal. We stop. We kill the creatures. Kill the portal with the staff. Done. Then there's also something called an infested grove. Corrupted Azoth has pooled under the earth. Spilling the ground, uh, splitting the ground, and giving rise to a twisted, corrupted monstrosity escaping its tendrils will be a perilous endeavor. So, yes, that's what an infested grove. And now, last but not least, well, la last but most, the festering hive. I guess this is going to be a, the biggest form of infestation we could have. So, uh, a towering hive formed from cor corruption has sprouted birthing and, and empowering the corrupted beings that reside within its walls so it's like a, a it's like a fort for them i guess so how we go about this is our own way if we want to do it, try to do it by ourselves if we want to form a group we could either go out and face these head-on or we can sit behind our walls and our forts until the corrupted eventually invade and that's what we're going to talk about next so yeah so obviously it, look, it, what it sounds like is these in, uh breaches you know, obviously they're breaching our area, breaching our territory, and they're p putting up a base camp. Now, we either need to go out and stop them from doing this, or we can sit and wait, and eventually an invasion will take place. So, that's what we're going to be talking about now. Yes, now we move on to invasions. The pinnacle of New World PvE. Not PvP, PvE. Never mind, PvE. Returnum is a mysterious and hostile land where you will fight to get a foothold and must... Be ready to defend it from invading forces the Corrupted. Obviously, we've talked about Corrupted a lot, because it's a lot, big player in this new game. <clears throat> when the forces are Corrupted have amassed enough strength in a territory, they lay siege. We, the defenders, must protect our fort against escalating waves of enemies. If, if, yeah, if successful, the Corrupted this army is repelled. If, on the other hand, we, the fort falls, the territory... Suffers and loses some upgrades, which is not fun. Invasions occur approximately every four days, according to the website. How do you participate in one of these invasions, one may ask. Very good question. The day before an invasion, players can sign up for the event in a settlement town board. The governor of the defending territory can choose ten heroes. Ten! To accompany him in the upcoming battle 
the remaining 40 slots. So it's going to be a 50 slot. I don't think it's an instance. I'm not sure if it's an instance or not. Hang on, let me go through. Um, but there will be 50 players in total to be able to uh, join this PvE event. 40 slots are randomly selected from players who signed up to take part in the next invasion. Note that only players above the level of 50, 50 people or above, so this is a more later game content, or above can participate in the invasions. So let's move on to the preparation phase. So in the preparation phase, you'll be provided 50 battle tokens. Players can earn additional battle tokens by performing various actions during the battle too, but these battle tokens will be used to um, uh, upgrade siege weapons or anti-siege weapons, preferably, you know, mounted guns on your uh, walls, on your towers, traps, uh, maybe potions and stuff. I'm not 100% sure, but yeah, so you can use these tokens in battle to lay traps, and there's a bunch of traps I saw. Um, it's like a fire trap, it's like a mine. It's pretty cool. Uh, players can earn more during battle. Yeah, we talked about that. The invasion phase. So this is the second phase. This is the first of eight waves. So there's going to be eight waves of enemies throughout this event. Let's call them events. I keep saying instances, but I want to say events. Let's call them, try to keep them events. That'll keep this going. So what can we expect to expect in these invasions, um, in these waves? You can expect grunts, raiders, snipers, bombers, brutes, bosses of all variety, it says. So that means you're going to have... Your small guys, obviously, your little uh, fire frauder. So, fodder, frauder. I always is that fodder or frauder? I never know. Let me know down in the comments below. What if I'm saying that word right? Fodder or frauder? I, I always wondered that. I need I need to look that up. Look it up after this video. But let me know in the comments below anyway. But yes, um, yes, obviously, then your raiders, who your your next level, next tier guys are pretty armored well, but that's greatest. And then you got your snipers, who are gonna be long distance guys in the back, trying to snipe people off the wall. You. I see you there, Jimmy, in, in the in the gun. He's gonna be sniping you. Why do you want to move away, you camping Carl? And shoot this camping Carl. And then there's bombers who are gonna be like the guys who want to, who are gonna do the most damage right to a single point at our gate, at our wall. Then brutes who are just like big tanks. Um, there's gonna be one on the screen. I have I have an image of one. They call them brutes. Then bosses. So there's gonna be a bunch of different bosses, I guess. Um, prop. It, 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 it'll be cool. It'll, we can't wait to see that. But yeah. Um, so yeah, after you make it, if you make it through all eight waves, you get to the end. The end, the end, everybody, let's finally get this. So, win or lose, players who contribute to the battle are awarded with XP in game currency and loot. We love that loot. I want to loot. I am not Groot, I want to loot. Finally, they are released back into the stunning yet dangerous land of a turn. So, this might be, I think this actually might be instance. instance. I am reading off a script real quick. Um, just notes. Just jot notes. I need some help with this, guys. Let me let me have it. But, um, yeah, you'll be released back to the land of a term. So I'm guessing they might seal off this area for a bit. Or it might be an instance-based thing. Which would be interesting. It'll be cool to see how that happens. Uh, should, should players be defeated, they will cause downgrade to the settlement territory. Players will receive some XP, loot, and Azeroth, depending on how many waves that were completed. So, obviously, the more waves you complete, complete the better the rewards are going to be. Uh, and I can't, this looks really cool. This looks really awesome. It's a, kind of like a horde mode. If you guys ever played uh, Gears of War, Gears of War had a horde mode. A bunch of games have horde modes. I'm talking. It's, it's like kind of a tower defense, but it's a limited tower defense. But I'm, I can't wait to kind of like get in and I don't know. It's, it's, it just seems like a really cool thing. I can't wait to see what rewards will come of this. Um, also, backtrack real quick. The arena says some of the best loot will be from arenas. So keep that in mind but you will get some really good loot obviously level 50 or above because players level 50 have to be able to um are the only ones able to go on this which i'm not actually very happy with so you have to grind all the way to level 50 to participate in some of the best ev events which i get it gives you a motive to go through the world faster but i'm kind of a person that kind of likes to take its time with leveling and enjoy myself so I'm not sure if I'm going to try to just level quickly through or not, but we will uh, see when we get to that path. And um, if you guys want to join me over in Eternum and fight against the Corrupted and other players, which we'll be talking about next week, we'll talk about PvP, some PvP aspects. And if you're excited for that, let me know, guys. Comment down below, like this video, subscribe to my channel, uh, follow me over on Twitch. 
Links will be down in the description below. And also, let's give a good shout out over to our friends at NewWorldForge.com, where I get a lot of my info. They help me out quite a bit. Thank you everyone for watching these videos. These videos have had a tremendous uh, feedback, and I am very happy. Thank you guys very much once again. And until next time, guys, keep fighting. And as always, bye!